this will take a minute for me to adjust this, you know? <laughs> I want to start, though, while I'm getting set up, just by saying thank you to Peace Love for having me. And I think talking about mental health like this openly is so important today. My name is Dev Mulvaney. Um, I'm a singer, songwriter, and filmmaker. I was born in New York, um, in Brooklyn, um, and raised in Connecticut. And for as long as I can remember, I've been around music because I was raised in a family of musicians. Um, my father was a drummer, my mother a music teacher, and my sister a singer-songwriter. My family and I have always used songs to express our joys and heartache, and I've used writing songs as a way to process what is going on around me. And on August 15th, 2015, I went through one of the hardest things uh, a person can experience, and I'm going to share with you a song that I wrote processing that. Let's just stop I don't want to talk out loud This is so fucked How am I supposed to go on now? You raise me to me Caring and loving But I find it hard To recall all of your teachings I just want to wait to make sense of it all I have stopped all of my text message and phone calls I just want to wait to make sense of it all Oh, of it all Stay call from my uncle. I called him right back. It's about your mother and Catherine. He went on to say. That they've passed away Your father's at the hospital He's critical All I want is to hold him I just want to hold my father in my arms And shield him from all of these speeding cars I just want to hold my father in my arms in my arms but he was all wired up to a bunch of strange machines the doctor said he was sick I asked him what that means That he's stable but unable 
to speak that night I cried myself to sleep I just want to wait to make sense of it all I have stopped all of my text message and phone calls I just want to wait to make sense of it all Oh, of it all I missed a call 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 I missed a Thank you. Um, my family was driving on the southbound side of the Taconic State Parkway when a car on the northbound side jumped the median, became airborne, and landed on my family's car. My mother and my sister along with a little girl from the other car, died that day. And my father was in a coma for a month until he succumbed to his injuries. Less than a week after the crash, I, with the help of my extended family and friends, had to move all of my family's possessions out of my fa my parents' newly sold condo in Brooklyn to a storage facility closer to the hospital. I didn't have any time to grieve my family or the loss of my home. For months, my girlfriend Lucy and I sorted through my family's possessions, and eventually we wound up in Austin, Texas. For the first years, I had pent up feelings of helpless frustration at not getting to say goodbye to my mother and sister and getting no response from my father before he died. I was bitter that I was the only person capable of taking care of my family's estate and all the paperwork that comes when you lose not one, but three people. I was grieving my future no grandparents for my future kids, the absence of my most important people. I'll be dealing with this for the rest of my life. For the first years, it was nearly impossible for me to feel grounded. I was disconnected. I was floating around everyone and everything. I was traumatized. I suffered from PTSD. I thought that at any given moment, another terrible thing could happen, and no place felt safe anymore. Um, I still, to this day, deal with many of these struggles. How have I been dealing with all this? Well. To be honest, my healing has had many starts and stops. Writing songs about my many stages of grief, like the song I just shared with you, has been a very healing and necessary process for me. Um, moving to Austin was a good 
first step, but being so far away from everything I've known has had mixed results. I've gone to a lot of therapy, acupuncture, grief groups, yoga, and trips around the country processing this tragedy. But I found the greatest amount of healing from one of the most unexpected of places, forgiveness. I didn't know how I felt about the other driver. I didn't know how he felt about this whole situation, and that made it really confusing for me. I did learn that he was very careless on the day of the crash, and that made me really angry. After going back and forth with my feelings towards him, I decided that there was only one way to move forward. The trial of New York State versus the driver came in January 2018. I was given an opportunity to read a victim impact statement. I spoke to the driver directly and voiced my frustrations through my sobs, but the biggest thing I did that day was forgive him. I believe all stories are different, and I can understand why some people may not want to forgive someone who has done them wrong. I can only speak on behalf of my own experience. And from my experience, forgiveness saved my life. When you forgive someone, the baggage of anger that you carry against that person becomes much lighter. I have no doubt that if I had chosen not to forgive him, the anger that I would have chosen to hold on to would have been a cancer to my soul. The only way for me to begin the process of truly moving past this tragedy was for me to forgive. After I spoke, the driver was given an opportunity to speak. He told me that after the crash, he didn't want to live anymore, and then he was ashamed of his carelessness. He told me that he visited the site of the crash and found that a cross was made for his daughter, along with three other crosses for my family members. My uncle Scott built these crosses, and I helped put one of them there after my father had died. The driver told me that this act of kindness opened him up, and he wanted to live again, and he wanted to be a good father to his remaining daughter and a good husband to his wife. The kindness that I and my family gave this man helped save his life, and the forgiveness that I and my family gave this man would help sustain him throughout his life. Me finally meeting him voicing my frustrations and forgiving him changed the horror story that I had in my head and humanized him and changed the story that I had in my head into something I could finally understand and accept. When I got home, I felt an immediate change. I wasn't floating all the time. I was more present. I began to see that not all was lost and that I could finally start to move beyond the tragedy. And I want to leave you all with this message to please go towards kindness and forgiveness. In today's social media and news-obsessed society, I fear we are moving further and further away from forgiveness and kindness. I think we are simplifying everyone and everything, and we're robbing others of their humanity. I encourage you all to not jump to conclusions about someone. We are all much more complicated than any given moment, Facebook post, or YouTube clip. I didn't know much about the driver before I met him, but I knew he was a human being, and I treated him that way. 
Upon reflection, I'd be lying to you if I said that I didn't struggle deeply with my decision to forgive. For a long time, I looked at my forgiveness as something that I was going to give to the driver with the expectation that I was going to receive nothing in return. I didn't realize till afterwards that I had actually given myself a gift. Because forgiveness is something that comes from within. And you live with it every single day. It's not over the day that you give it. Me living in this forgiveness reminds me of the beliefs my family instilled in me. It keeps them and their message alive within me, and it keeps my soul intact. The hardest part is that there's nothing I could do to change the fact that my family are gone. The only thing I could change now is how I respond to what happened to me. And I have no control over what the driver does from here on out. I can only hope that he will take my forgiveness and go towards being a better person because of it. But I have no control over what he does. I have only control over myself. And I accepted this uncertainty with my actions because we are all that is left from this terrible tragedy. And because of that, there is hope. The hope is us. It's life itself. It's every day we wake up and have the opportunity to try to be better and to do the right thing. And I wanted to encourage this hope for him. And by doing so, I was encouraging hope for myself. Thank you so much.